Ahoy there! Today's video is all about the magic white fluffy stuff on the strings. Unicorns! Uh, hold on. Why is that in the script? But why do we need cotton? Apart from the fact that it is super practical to put into your ears whenever you hear a hurdy-gurdy play. I'm sorry, my gurdy maker wanted me to tell this joke. Cotton serves two big purposes. The first, most important, is the sound. Here's my melody string without cotton. And here's it with cotton. The cotton gives more friction to the wheel and the string and makes it sound like a soft violin bow. The second practical thing is that it also protects the string from getting worn down by playing. So how the hell do we put it on the string? First of all, we have to take off the old cotton from the string. This works well if you gently scratch it with your fingernail. If it already is way too solid for scratching it off, try putting a few drops of liquid rosin on it to kind of soften the cotton. Once the string is completely clean, I take a drop of liquid rosin on my right fingertip and drip it onto the part of the string that will be wrapped in cotton. When it's dried for a few seconds, you can start to take a little amount of cotton. With time, you will get a feeling for the amount of cotton you need for your gurdy. But please make sure you don't use too much cotton, as this can have an effect on the pitch of the string and the tangents. You don't want that, it messes up the intonation. So if you're not sure, start with a little and add until satisfied. Wrap it around until it's neat, tidy, even and very compressed. Often it will wrap around by itself. I just use the tip of my finger to make sure that there's no cotton going to the sides. And I don't touch the wheel by doing so. Now I could say we're finished. But if you want to know how to glue the cotton onto the string for fiddling, then keep on watching. Take another drop of rosin, put up the string and dip it onto the upper sides of the cotton like so. Make sure you never touch the wheel and let it dry for a few seconds. Now put down the string again and see if it was enough. If it's still moving, repeat. Alright, now we're good to go. So, how do we influence the sound with different cotton and ways to put it on? Depending on your gurdy, the string pressure you like to play with and your personal sound preferences, you can use more or less amount of cotton. So, what kind of cotton does Patty use? The answer is, I don't know. I just steal a bit from my gurdy maker every time I visit him. <laughs> Fun fact, though, when I run out of cotton and I'm on tour and I have no one to steal cotton from, Usually what works best is use tampon cotton. <laughs> she said tampon. No joke, I know girdies that only use tampon cotton. Guys, it's not embarrassing anymore to ask a woman for a tampon. Come on, gender equality, we're in the 21st century. But if that still sounds weird to you, normal cosmetic cotton will do too. Many girdists love that Egyptian brushed cotton too, but I have to say that for my purposes it's rather unpractical. I just need that little bit of chaos in the cotton to make sure it sticks well to the string. Brushed cotton comes off too quickly. Patty, how often do you have to change the cotton? That depends on how much you play and on the particular string. I change the melody string cottons the most often. They just get the most strain through the fiddling. The drum cotton and the trumpet cotton I personally don't change that often. Although you do have to pay attention to the trumpet. The cotton has a huge effect on how well the buzzing works. Make sure it's well compressed. And when I play live, I even prefer to play with older cotton. Through the pickup system on my gurdy, it doesn't even sound that bad. And it's more reliable for me on stage to have cotton from which I know that it will stay in place. Sometimes when I'm in the studio, it happens that I'm changing cotton every hour. It depends on how soft the sound should be that I'm going for. Yes, it all depends, you see? <laughs> and what I just showed you is just my favorite way to put on cotton right now. It might be completely different in two years. Find your personal style how to put on cotton and work out what works best for you. By the way, if anyone has questions about liquid rosin and rosin in general, Put that in the comments, just as usual, and I will make a video about it. <laughs> Alright guys, I hope this was helpful, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye!